A warehouse filled with about 500 tons of recycled paper went up in flames overnight on the Portland waterfront. The warehouse is located at the Merrill Marine Terminal. Workers were loading the paper onto a ship when the fire broke out around 3 a.m. The vice president of the terminal says he believes the fire started when a spark from the exhaust of a lift truck ignited a bale of paper. By the time firefighters arrived, the fire was roaring and flames were shooting from the building. Initial reports are from workers at the scene. Uh, they were moving paper inside the building. They discovered a small fire on the face of the bale of paper. Uh, they tried to extinguish it, but it spread too rapidly. They ended up calling us. Firefighters went after the fire from the Four River as well as from land. They used the Portland fireboat and a patrol boat from the Coast Guard. There were no injuries, and word is the warehouse can be repaired. Early on the morning of November 18, 1999, a fast-spreading fire in an unsprinklered warehouse in Portland, Maine, provides an opportunity to examine the fire performance of a membrane-clad structure. Within a week following this severe fire, which totally destroys the building's contents, the warehouse is fully repaired and back in operation. When membrane structures are considered for planning approval, a primary concern is fire performance. Although these type of structures have been in use for nearly 50 years and are becoming more widely accepted in the construction marketplace, they incorporate materials and technology which are relatively new when compared to older cladding materials such as wood, steel, and masonry. Given this, many of the existing building codes and test standards either do not address membrane structures or are inappropriately applied to their use. This presentation will examine the performance of a membrane structure in the event of a fire, as well as how these structures relate to current codes and standards. We will provide commentary from the owner of the warehouse involved in the fire, from the deputy fire chief present at the fire, and from the manufacturer of the membrane materials which were involved. What is a membrane structure? A membrane structure typically consists of a supporting framework over which is tensioned a flame retardant architectural fabric. Properly designed and verified membrane structures can support significant loads and are engineered to fully comply with building codes with respect to wind, roof, and seismic requirements. As an example, the United Airlines hangar in Boston, Massachusetts has a steel truss depth of nearly seven feet and is designed for a 30 pound per square foot roof live load, a basic wind speed of 90 miles per hour, and collateral loads imparted by several mechanical systems. The graphic shows that this structure can accept a million pound uniformly distributed load over the entire roof surface. A membrane structure's framework can consist of many types of materials, but is generally either steel or aluminum. In some architectural membrane structures, tensioned cables may also function as primary supporting elements for the membrane. The most predominant membrane materials are vinyl coated polyester fabrics. What are the uses and characteristics of vinyl-coated polyester fabrics? Siemens Corporation produces architectural fabrics for a variety of different markets. Some of these markets include tents and rental tent applications, tension frame structures for manufacturing and warehousing, and air-supported structures for recreational applications such as golf domes and tennis court covers. In each one of these market segments, the flame-resistant characteristics of the fabric are of vital importance. Siemen Corporation produces architectural fabrics from PVC coated polyester materials. We start out with the polyester yarns and incorporate them into the base fabric. We then coat these yarns with a PVC compound on both the outside and inside of the material. The PVC compound is formulated in such a manner that it is flame retardant. These flame retardant characteristics come from additives such as antimony trioxide and aluminum trihydrate, which are incorporated into the PVC compound. These additives are permanent additions to the compound, and as long as the compound is on the material, the material is flame retardant. The self-extinguishing properties of a PVC-coated polyester material are determined using the NFPA 701 test procedure. This is a vertical flame test on the material and it is very similar to 
the procedures for California Fire Marshal and for UL-214. In this test procedure, a sample of material is supported in a vertical position and a flame source is exposed to the bottom of that sample. The flame source is there for 12 seconds and then removed and the material needs to be self-extinguishing within two seconds. Seaman Corporation performs this test on a sample from every hundred yards of material that we produce. The fire safety of materials passing the NFPA 701 and ASTM E84 requirements was evaluated in a 1994 factory mutual full-scale fire test of a membrane clad structure. This study was commissioned by the United States Department of Energy and the structure tested was similar in construction to those widely used at DOE facilities across the United States. This test structure consisted of a rub steel truck frame structure, which was clad with PVC coated polyester manufactured by Siemens Corporation. Factory Mutual's written report of this test concluded that the fabric membrane used, quote, will not propagate flame or sustain combustion when exposed to a severe fire, unquote. That only the fabric immediately adjacent to the fire source became involved in the fire and that smoke detectors will provide early warning against fire prior to burn through or venting of the structure. The factory mutual test also demonstrated that steel frame temperatures in the test structure did not reach a level where structural damage would have been a concern. In short, the factory mutual test indicated that a steel frame membrane structure with a membrane that complies with NFPA 701 would perform acceptably in an actual fire situation. In addition to this laboratory test, there are many examples of actual fires in membrane structures. In many of these fires, damage to the structure and downtime due to the fire have been significantly less than would have been the case with other types of construction. The Merrill Fire of November 18, 1999 is an excellent example of this performance. Paul Merrill describes the events of that morning. We were loading uh, waste paper, baled waste paper, into a vessel, uh, and the uh, waste paper generally is, is shredded. And so in any, every time a bale is picked up by a lift truck, uh, usually some shredded material, fine material, falls on the floor, and that creates a fire hazard. And apparently a, a spark from some machinery ignited some of the material that was on the floor. And in no time at all, it is spread from one bale to the next, and it was beyond what anybody could do, control with a fire extinguisher. The flames uh, went right up through the roof uh, very quickly, and the roof melted. And because we had had one minor experience with this uh, a number of years ago, we, it performed exactly as we expected that it would. The, uh, the building uh, immediately vented the, uh, the, the heat uh, most fire departments have to do the venting. In this case, the building did it itself. The result was that the structure was not overheated and the structure was, was uh, essentially unharmed. There was no repair required to their structure at all. We simply put a uh, new fabric on the building and it was back in service in just about seven days. We, we select these buildings for a variety of reasons, uh, not, the, not the least of which is its ability to uh, accommodate differential settlement without any uh, serious structural problem. Uh, but also because they are, uh, they are lightweight, uh, they don't require a sprinkler system to be basically a safe building, and, and that, is a, that is also a very big plus. We, try not, we don't plan on having fires. We try to operate so we won't have a fire. And uh, so I wouldn't say that that's the primary reason for selecting the building, but it's a very important one, and as it turned out, uh, now having used these buildings since 1983, uh, we had a major fire and, and it turned out to be very much in our favor uh, to have had this type of building as opposed to another which clearly would have been a total disaster and would have been a total loss any other kind of building. And when we first started using these buildings an there were an awful lot of naysayers. A lot of people were very skeptical that these buildings would, would compete in any way with a conventional building. And uh, we, as a result, have, have taken a lot of pleasure in showing people <laughs> these buildings and demonstrating that they are uh, very uh, they just work very well. At approximately 3 o'clock on November 18th, the Portland Fire Department responded to 601 West Danforth Street, the Merrill Industry Plant. 
Firefighters arrived and found a 150 foot by 300 foot warehouse involved in fire. This wa warehouse was basically a Quonset style warehouse with a canvas covering. Uh, the fire had vented itself out through the canvas style top, uh, making access for the firefighters to use master streams from ladder guns and their fireboat to extinguish the fire. Uh, the building itself, uh, as the fire burnt, the external covering appeared to melt away. It did not uh, encourage flame production. Uh, this benefit to the Portland Fire Department was, uh, was terrific because basically uh, the heated gases and smoke was escaping from the building. At the same time, it gave us access from the outside of the building to extinguish the fire. The building itself, the structure of the building, made it extremely safe for the firefighters to work in the area. We did not have to place people on top of the building to vent the building. In a normal warehouse fire this size, uh, firefighters take extreme beatings from the smoke and heated gases. Uh, we did not have to endanger firefighters by placing them on the roof to vent the building. As the building burned, it actually uh, melted away and uh, provided ventilation by itself. Actually, the building, uh, the way it was manufactured, uh, was a great benefit to the fire department. These observations and comments serve to reinforce the fact that membrane structures, which comply with NFPA 701, have many positive life safety aspects for both fire department personnel and structure occupants in the event of a fire. Membrane structures typically also offer the benefit of an arched roof that functions as a high smoke containment space to direct smoke up and away from the building's occupants. In essence, the membrane functions as a self-venting system that allows heat and smoke to escape from the structure and allows fire department personnel immediate and safe access to the flame source. In conclusion, properly specified NFPA 701 flame retardant PVC coated membranes do not propagate flame, do not support combustion, are self-extinguishing, are self-venting, thereby releasing heat and smoke, have a class one flame spread rating, and do not lose their flame resistant properties over time. Given these characteristics, frame supported tension membrane structures may be viewed as offering certain advantages over more fire resistive materials such as concrete block or metal cladding. The ability of the building to self-vent reduces or eliminates the need for automatic smoke and heat venting that is mandated by code for many building types. The release of heat and smoke reduces the opportunity for fatigue and failure of the structural frame, for damage to stored materials, and most importantly, for injury to building occupants. Another important feature of the membrane is that even if it does not melt away, it can be quickly cut away to allow immediate access to or escape from the structure's interior. Both the factory mutual test and real life fire experience have demonstrated that frame temperatures generally do not reach the level where the load carrying capacity of a steel superstructure is compromised. Even in the intense fire experienced in the factory mutual test, the membrane in the test withstood sufficient temperatures to allow sprinklers to function properly during a fire. Some building code authorities have begun to view such membrane coverings as being functionally equivalent to having no covering at all, thus avoiding the need to install costly fire resistive construction and expensive fire suppression systems to protect the structure from the likelihood of a structural failure in a fire. In these instances, fire suppression systems can then be focused on appropriately protecting the contents of the building rather than the structure itself. In nearly 50 years of actual field experience involving many millions of square feet of building space, structures utilizing membranes that are flame retardant to NFPA 701 have had an enviable safety record. These structures have gained approval for use in difficult regulatory climates both in the United States and abroad. They have proven their safety in actual fire conditions, and there are valid arguments that these self-venting buildings offer advantages over more traditional construction.
These advantages must be weighed with regard to the specific standards being developed or considered and the specific use of the structure.